will you join me today at the wheel of a modern retro? This is a 2004 Volkswagen New Beetle. Now before I get into the video, there is something I need to do on one of the cars and I've forgotten what it is. Oil change on this one? I'm not supposed to be doing brakes on the Volvo, am I? It's not an oil change on Quentin today, is it? No, that's not right. Am I supposed to be doing a cam belt on something today? Honestly, it's too much. I'm losing track of what I'm supposed to be doing. It's lucky I've signed up to Auto.Club now. It's free to set up your garage and then it helps you keep track of your car's servicing, oil changes, maintenance, other running repairs. You can see what you've been spending, what the cars have cost you. I might just ignore that bit though. Update your mileage and it'll suggest service requirements and link you to parts that are right for your car, saving you hassle and time. And when you come to tackle the job, there are helpful professional video tutorials on a growing list of popular makes and models to guide you through the task. Hit the link below to sign up, it's free. And you can start to take the hassle out of the regular maintenance on your car, cars or fleet of cars. Now, back to the video. This is a 2004 Volkswagen New Beetle 1.9 TDI. Now, retro styling became very much a thing back in the 1990s. Maybe it was the influence of the David Suchet era Poirot series. Who can really be sure, but things really came to a head in the early 90s with the Batman animated series, set firmly in the 1930s Art Deco era of style with modern technology. And that was an ethos that was kind of picked up and run with by the car designers. And so by the end of the millennium, there was a plethora of uh, retro style cars. We've got the Mini, the Fiat 500, the Ford Thunderbird, the PT Cruiser, the SSR, that kind of PT Cruiser-esque uh, van thing, um, the Prowler, and of course this, the new Beetle, which came out in 1998. Now the first glimpse we got of what was going to become the Beetle came in 1994 at the Detroit Auto Show, uh, when the Concept One, built on a polo platform designed by Jay Mays and Morgan Freeman. That doesn't sound right. Jay Mays and Freeman Thomas from the California design studio of Volkswagen revealed the Concept One, which looked a lot like this, but obviously a little smaller on the Polo platform. That went down well, and so production approval was granted in early 1995, and in Tokyo's 1995 auto show, the Concept Two was shown, which had evolved the ideas a little further, but was really a bit of a sneak peek at what was gonna be the production car not much longer later. And so the public loved it, which convinced Volkswagen that they're on the right track, and they pursued that dream, and in 1998, the PQ34 platform, or Golf Mark IV, as it's pretty better known, uh, based New Beetle arrived to the world. Started production in 1997 for the 1998 model year. Now in terms of similarities with the original Type 1 Beetle, um, there aren't many, apart from, well, the obvious shape of this PQ34 based Beetle and Type 1. They've got the same curves, the same rounds. This is very much a California envisioned car. You can really tell it came out of the California design studio in the 90s. If you didn't know that, you could just look at it and pretty much tell. But there the similarities end. The Beetle originally wasn't built on a shared platform, it was its own platform. This is built on a golf platform. This is clearly a lot bigger, so therefore it's a lot safer. Uh, looking in the boot. This is a full-on hatchback, and there's nothing to change the oil on back here. This is a bootal area. The engine, as I'm sure you are aware, is in the front. It's four cylinders, same as the original Beetle. Okay, you've got two similarities, but it's an inline four. This one's a diesel though, and it's turbo, so the similarities pretty much end there. And it's water-cooled, it's nothing like it. It is the styling that makes this car, really. If this didn't have the Beetle looks and where he was basically an impractical Golf Mark IV based concept, it really wouldn't have got the traction it did, I don't think. However, it does have the Beetle name, the Beetle looks, this cute, lovable face. You can't look at it and not, you know, think, oh, cute puppy or kitten if you like cats. But if you do, what's wrong with you? Dogs are better, obviously. It's got the big baby puppy eyes, which are brains are hardwired to find adorable. So you can't hate the Beetle, even if you say you do. It's a good looking thing. It's almost like a caricature of a modern Beetle, but gone into production, which is really quite fantastic that Volkswagen had, I was gonna say the bravery to do it, but knowing the Beetle heritage, they knew it was gonna be a good seller. So brave slash shrewd, perhaps we could say. 
Unlike the original Beetle where everything was separate and modular, the wings you could see where they joined and the bumpers were big chunks of metal that hang on the front and the back. This is all very much more sculpted, more aerodynamic, obviously much more crash safe if you'd ever nudge. Now moving upwards, following the original design of the original Beetle, which had a great big, up, well not great big, but certainly a very tall upright window. This too has a very, very big windscreen. Uh, obviously we've followed the architecture of the Golf on the inside underneath, but it's much narrower. The rake is completely different and this low scuttle means this whole glass area is absolutely massive. But you look inside here, this dashboard starts there and ends there. That is such a big dashboard. So it's a massive crash area, I suppose, if you're going to shunt this car, you probably do quite well in it. But look at the curve of the windscreen. This car is all curves. Windscreen curves down, bonnet curves down, the wheel arches curve round and across and into the door. It's one big massive curve. Now, if you wanted to be critical of the Beetle, you could point out it is more style over substance because modern cars don't need a big separate sill or rocker if you're watching in America because this is all integrated into the chassis. Uh, so we actually lost a bit of space on the inside by recessing the door inside this, but it gives it the look of the original car, which is what they were going for. Now it's not often you point to the bonnet at the front and say the engine's at the wrong end, but in this case we perhaps can because you know those old air-cooled VWs and Porsches had their engine at the wrong end, which makes it the right end, so this is the wrong end. Anyway, under the bonnet there were plenty of choices, no matter what you wanted, there was a Beetle for you. There was a 1.4, a 1.6, a 1.8 turbo, a 2 litre, 2.3 and 2.5 litre 5 cylinder 20 valves, and of course the 3.2 litre VR6. And those petrol engines gave you power outputs between 75 and 255 horsepower, so whatever you needed, there was a Beetle for you. Then there were three diesels with 101, 105, or in this case, 90 horsepower. Insurance or performance loading, it's all there. There was also the choice of a five or a six speed manual, a four or a six speed auto, and a six speed DSG. Volkswagen were ticking every box and covering every base with all of this. Now this car belongs to a new driver, so uh, hence it's the 90 horsepower. This is not the fastest in the range. It's got a 0 to 60 of about 14 and a half seconds and a top speed of about 100. Now the earliest versions of the Beetle had a really nice badge which moved out the way and gave you a handle underneath her so you could get in. These ones don't have that. You either use the key or you use the door uh, button to release the boot, same as on the early ones, but then you just have to stick your fingers under there and do it the old fashioned way. Now obviously no car built in the late 90s, early noughties would have sold if it wasn't a hatchback. If people want the practicality, this isn't that practical I have to say because uh, the boot aperture follows the wing line of the original Beetle, this kind of shape into a little point like on the old engine cover which gives it a relatively small boot space. Uh, you, it goes out maybe that much either side so you've got a bit more space but it's very shallow as well. Uh, there's a tiny weeny little little baby load space cover. It's not on strings, so it doesn't raise up and go down with the lid. So if you do lift it up, you have to remember to push it down manually. The rear seat does fold down, so you can have a bit more space if you want to, but still, it's not vast. You're not gonna move any washing machines in this, but if you've got stuff to move, now and then, it's not the end of the world. You can put a dog in here or something, and it won't mind too much. As I say, in terms of load space, it's uh, not ideal for disposing of things. This was one of the major criticisms of the Beetle when it first came out because people said, oh, you know, it's not practical, you can't get much stuff in it. But that really was missing the point. This is a car for fun and enjoying being out in the sunshine, especially the convertible one, which had even less boot space than this. It's all about just enjoying the day. Well, getting in is easy because the doors are vast. They go back way behind the driver's seat, so climbing in and out is not a problem, even though the dashboard does extend a really long way into the car. This giant dashboard is just immense. I'm gonna to have to do a cutaway of the T-shelfery of this car because there is a problem common to most retro-style cars, that cup holders are rubbish, so I couldn't bring my cup with me. It's got two cup holders down here, which are basically useless which is a shame because it's got the vast, vast T-shelf up here where you could have a veritable smorgasbord of dinner going on on that vast expanse. If you're looking for a landing site for a moonshot, you could rent this space to Elon Musk as a landing pad for his next space mission. It's insane. But it's the irony of this. It's like the daddy long legs with the apocryphal uh, venom that can kill a man but fangs that couldn't pierce tissue paper. You have the space for the greatest picnic on Earth, but but no cup holders to carry the drinks there. This could have been a 29 out of 10, but no, it's a two out of 10. Oh, Volkswagen, what were you thinking? See, all these retro pastiche cars, always got a fault somewhere. Right, I'm gonna take you off the tripod and show you around the interior. 
Right, let's start with the door. Now, because we are taking inspiration from the earlier classic Beetle, we've got body colour panels. This isn't metal, it's body colour plastic, so it's a lot nicer and safer should you have to bang yourself into it for any given reason. In the top part of it, we've got nice metal door handles from a Golf. I'm going to close this a bit because it's open so wide I can't reach it. There we go, so we've got golf style metal door handles, locker, unlocker, and window mirror electric switch with a heater. How cool is that? Very posh. Moving down, we've got these rather square and angular um, window switches, which are cushioned quite nicely. Nice damping action on those switches, I like that. That's in like a tough plastic door card that's not particularly nice to, to touch, that tactile area, but you don't touch that, but you touch this bit here which is carpeted and padded, so that's actually uh, a lot nicer. And you do have this interestingly styled uh, curved door handle. Now if you think back to industrial design of like TVs, computers, uh, home hi-fi, that kind of stuff, the little dotted pattern was a fairly common theme of styling back in the 90s. And looking below that we've got more hard plastic with a big speaker. This is the mid-range, there's a tweeter up in the A-post. And here in the driver's door, this is where it was from the very beginning of production, we've got our fuel cap and our boot releases. And look at the boot release logo. Nice little stylized beetle. Anywhere they could get away with putting a stylized beetle, they did. And that moves back into a quite useful little netted area. I quite like this because it, it's not fixed hard plastic like on, on most cars, which limits to what you put in and also rattles. Because it's a little bit tight and it's elasticated, stuff doesn't rattle in there, that's quite nice. And right at the back, we've got a little warning light so that when doors open, traffic doesn't pass by and smack into it. Now the dashboard. Here we have potentially the greatest T-shelf slash SpaceX landing area you've ever seen. Absolutely vast. It's a bit weirdly scratched on the side. I don't know if they've uh, carried a pet on the dashboard at some point, um, but it's certainly big enough to put a small pug-sized dog, for example. Uh, in front of that, or behind that towards you, it is textured. It looks like fabric, but it's actually like a, a textured plastic stuff, uh, which is ideal for trapping uh, dust. But cancelling reflections, so it's pluses and minuses there. And in the centre we've got this vast, vast area with the big air vents, which I imagine are meant to look like the tail lights of a Beetle. So I thought, in fact, this whole thing looks a bit like the wings and the back of a Volkswagen original Beetle um, from behind. This is uh, quite a massive ventilation area. Now let's talk about the dashboard. This is a nice little pod. This is good design because you can flip this pod from right-hand drive to left-hand drive and uh, saves an awful lot of building costs and construction costs on, on dashboard componentry. Um, now this is a very basic um, dashboard. It was picked up on early reviews because they were trying to hark back and uh, emulate the previous classic Beetle. All we've got in here are three dials within this one um, enclosure. The speedo going up to 140, which this car doesn't. Uh, the fuel gauge, which goes to full, which I imagine this car sometimes does, and being a diesel will last a very long time. And rev counter. What we don't have is a temperature gauge. What I noticed when I first turned it on this morning, and unfortunately it went off too quickly for me to get a shot of, a little blue warning light to show the engine is cold comes on up here and when, if should the engine overheat, I haven't managed to achieve that yet today, um, that will go to red I assume rather than just kill the engine and you'll find out when the bonnet explodes. So yeah, very limited information coming to the driver. Then moving back we've got standard issue Volkswagen, uh, same as every Polo and I think Golfs and things of, of this era, uh, little stalks and then a very cool steering wheel. I'll move the camera back a bit for you so you can see more of this. This is hard textured rubbery plastic and a center section with the horns on. Let's get a key on. Horn test. Now I think that horn is meant to sound a bit like a 1960s Beetle. Uh, it kind of does, a kind of raspy note. And then it's a three spoke wheel so it looks kind of funky, kind of cool. We've got more of the plastic uh, silver um, giving it a bit more style and look and thing. And we've got another tail light shaped air vent down here and of course a little tweeter. Headlights, gubbins are all down here to the right hand side and to the left hand side of the wheel we have got the Vars! Thankfully this car does come equipped with a flower otherwise I'd been very disappointed. This would have got 0 out of 10 on everything if it hadn't had a flower in the Vars. This is an essential component of all Beetles of course. In the centre console we've got space for a radio. This has been updated for a more, more modern unit with DAB and useful stuff. 
very basic heater controls, but do have air conditioning, which is excellent. And we've got heated seats in here as well. well this is a bit of a bonus. Didn't notice that, I wish I realized that when I was set off at minus one degrees this morning. We have the option to turn our ESP off so we can skid and crash if we so desire rear screen heater and I'm gonna guess that these parking sensors are aftermarket that does not look like a Volkswagen switch to me and moving down further still we have got a two cup holders which will only take minor espresso cups and a 12 volt power socket and a cuddly morty which I don't think is standard equipment on this particular model I think this is an optional extra and my glasses which you definitely don't get now we do get we do get a rather a nice perforated leather ball shaped gear knob which is very good it's one of those nice notch it's one of those nice flickety through the gears gear changes with just a little bit of resistance it's yeah quite a cool thing and the handbrake also has a perforated leather on it as well which is good and yet another 12 volt socket so we are never going to be short of power in this car finally we've got a little cubby hole between the seats under the armrest and the seat fabric and uh and this arm top are all very hard wearing, heavy duty. This is beyond tweed, this is beyond cord. I don't even know what we call this stuff. Something endu enduro fab, I don't know. We need to make up a new name for this. It's got endurance in its fabric, it's enduro fab. It's just really tough, hard wearing, uh, kind of scratchy under your nails kind of fabric. So tough, toughness, toughness abounds. And finally in the front, we've got a massive, chunky, hand grab rail so if you're going off-roading in your beetle you can keep hold of that it's underneath the airbag i'm assuming this stays put in the airbag goes above it rather than firing this into your face that would be bad and the glove box lid which like the door pulls has got the little indent pattern in its handle that repeating that theme finally in the front we've got uh, our little instrument cluster up here in the top showing the time and the temperature has risen quite significantly and now it's two and a half degrees so it's uh, actually very warm. This car also has the bonus of a reversing camera. So no excuses for backing this in into things. One of the criticisms of this car when it first came out was parking visibility and manoeuvrability was tricky because you couldn't really see where the edges were. So uh, all the early buying guides will look out for parking damage and uh, that certainly negates that. Now, climbing into the back is easy. That seat really does fold really well forward, so we've got tons of room. Stepping in is not bad. Now, once we're in, we've got more of the same pretend metal plastic, uh, more slightly padded, hard-wearing fabric. Another big speaker, and then we have got then we have reading lights on the left hand and right hand side. Interestingly. Over the passenger seat in the front, we've got a uh, grab handle. On the driver's side, we've got a sunglasses case. That's cool, and it's nicely padded on the inside. I have used these in some cars which weren't padded and scratched the sunglasses. That's padded all around, that's good. Now it's not all happiness back here because although I've got a big ashtray with one of those funny holes for standing cigarettes up on their end, which Germans seem to like, bizarrely, and a cup holder, and stretchy seat back pockets you know I'm, I'm pretty much sorted for many luxuries back here uh, i don't have a lot in the way of headroom my head is actually sitting up into the glass of the tailgate um, and if i'm sitting up more naturally i'm underneath the, like, the hinge area which is dipping down quite heavily so my head is touching the ceiling so it's not ideal for full-size humans if you've got a smaller human then you could probably house it in the back of here quite well but a regular size one is going to struggle Right, it is a diesel, so it clambers into life. Now, the thing you notice about the steering wheel when you're trying to find your right driving position is that it is adjustable, it goes in and out and up and down, but the highest setting really isn't very low. I actually thought it was set really low for a, a smaller driver than me when I first got in, but it turned out that's as high as it, it sets. Now, I put a GoPro over into the farthest corner of the windscreen to give you an impression of just how big this dashboard area is. I'm going to have to drive this car fairly carefully today. I always drive cars carefully anyway. <laughs> I'm not saying I'd thrash and abuse people's cars when they've lent them to me. But this particular car does have a black box fitted because the owner is a relatively new driver and has terrifically harsh insurance. So I need to be keeping this well below the speed limit and no 0 to 60 tests, no harsh braking. So I can't do a brake test and I can't do a 0 to 60. Otherwise their insurance is going to go up. Which sounds like a great way of blackmailing someone, frankly. 
Okay, moving into traffic. You notice very quickly that that cool, fun, swoopy bonnet absolutely vanishes in front of you. Uh, moving down the road, I cannot see at all where it ends. I'm literally driving by the force. And also, because we're now used to cars where the doors just go straight down to the bottom of the car, I do also have the impression that this is the edge of the car right here to my right, but in fact, it's not. The sills and the wings stick out like that much, as they would have done on, say, a pre-war car. For example, a Beetle. <laughs> now, in many ways, this does feel like a golf, just a golf that's a little bit narrower on the inside. And I guess that's not a bad thing. Certainly from 2002 onwards, when they uh, heavily revised the Golf's underpinnings and livened up that car, because it was a bit wooden to drive uh, the Mark IV before that, this also enlivened as well in keeping with the Golf. So it's actually not bad. The steering is surprisingly heavy. Let's go around this roundabout one time extra just to give you a bit of a feel of that. And the car is very neutral handling. It's quite sure-footed, even on a slippery day like today. That's quite happy to do that. 20 miles an hour. Yeah, so the steering is actually heavier than I was expecting. For a car that's designed to look and feel small and light, the, the wheel is actually quite heavily weighted. But in terms of ride, it really does feel like a regular Golf rather than like a GTI or something like that. If it's got that sort of slightly heavy, heavy in the wheels, but smooth riding feel that, that Golfs tend to have. Now moving on to a faster road, you do notice the acceleration isn't momentously brisk. 90 horsepower, I think, puts this at the second least powerful be um, new Beetle in the range. Just looking at that massive pile of ice that must have fallen off the top of an Arctic lorry. Articulated, not from the Arctic. Cruise up to 50 takes a few seconds, and then it's a nice quiet cruise. There's a bit of rumble from the diesel engine and a bit of wind noise, but mostly the noise is tyre road noise rather than anything else. It's very smooth, very calm, and very relaxing. And you do just enjoy the look over that long dashboard and wonder where the bonnet is, and enjoy the look of this quite cool steering wheel and dashboard. Something that did surprise me was the feel of the brake pedal. Now, I don't know if this is normal or not, because I've not driven one of these for a very long time. But uh, the brake pedal is very, very soft, almost nothing for the first bit of travel. And then it kind of starts biting. Not a lot of brake feel, to be honest. It's a little bit wooden. Now, it'd be really easy to criticise the Beetle for being an undersized or under interior sized Golf and nothing more than that. So you've, you've missed out on the practicality of a Golf. Why would you want this car? Well, that's kind of missing the point of this car. You're buying this car because you don't need the practicality. If you're the kind of person who a convertible would also be completely suitable for, you're not worried about the number of litres of capacity in your boot and all that kind of boring stuff. You want something that looks good, makes you smile, and ultimately is reliable. And this was a really reliable car back in the day. So it's ticking all the boxes. You want something that looks fun, looks different. If you're after a car that you look out the front window and you see it outside and it makes you smile, because it doesn't need to be serious. It's fun, it's silly, it's perfect. It's exactly what you're looking for. However, the fun ended in 2011 when the new Beetle was replaced by the Beetle. I mean, it technically it should have been the new, new Beetle, but it wasn't. It just went back to being the Beetle, but not the old Beetle, the new, new, unnamed old Beetle, the new Beetle. You with me? Which was a new car again. It was based on a, a newer version of a Volkswagen platform and obviously restyled for a newer generation. But really, I think the later one lost a lot of the fun and the innocence and the freshness of this style. Because although this is harking back to a design from 1939, it has a certain freshness and specialness which a lot of these new retro designs had when they first appeared in the 90s. Like the original R50 Mini, has got that same big cute face with the big bug eyes, which just makes it look fun and friendly, and it wasn't over bloated. Sure, the later new Beetle without the name new was a lot sharper looking, maybe it handled better, maybe the interior was better, I don't know, I've not driven one actually yet. 
but it lacked the interest, spark, the, the, the zazzle of this car. Let's call it zazzle. Let's try a wiper test quickly. Those are some long wipers, aren't they? They're spindly, like Edward Scissorhands is wiping your window for you. The positive of a car like this is it's based on a Golf. So running gear, mechanical parts are dirt cheap. They are everywhere. Servicing this, uh, fixing mechanical problems, not a problem. Not that they particularly turn up very often, apparently, on this generation of New Beetle. However, you do have the thing that the bodywork is unique. So if you mash it, then you've got to go find the right panels, which could be harder. Because of the uh, bulbous bodywork, which isn't always very easy to see, you might find you're needing the old wing or bumper more often than perhaps in the Golf version of this. And that, combined with a slightly smaller interior space, is really the only criticism of this car. It is noticeably narrow. In fact, the back seat is only a two-seat back seat. There are only two um, seat belts on the back bench, you may notice. Of course, if they'd made this dash a bit smaller, they could have had a third row in and turned it into a six-seater, really. Volkswagen really missed a trick there. They didn't explore all the options they could have followed. Very sloppy thinking. Now, one thing I have learned today, not so much about Volkswagens or new Beetles, is that driving with a black box is horrible. My God, fight the machines, people. This is the worst. I have really, I'd say not enjoyed driving this car. I've enjoyed driving the Beetle, but it's been one of the most tense and nerve wracking drives I've done in a long time. Because I know that a late break if someone pulls out in front of me and I have to stand on the brakes if I need to make a fast getaway into traffic, it's going to be recorded by the box and count against, well, not me personally, but the owner of this car. This is just horrific. I do not want any of this kind of stuff in my car ever. And combine that with the absolutely awful speed marking of road, so you have no clue what speed limit you're actually in. Half the time I'm driving at 30 or 40 in a 40 or a 50 just to be on the safe side. Oh, this is the worst. Anyone driving with a black box right now, you have my total, total sympathy. Oh. Now one kind of fun thing about this new Beetle and other kind of retro styled cars of the period is the way they turned the car itself into a brand. In this case, they've got the Beetle logo, which is just three little semicircles stacked on top of each other to be the shape of a Beetle. They did the same thing with the Mini, obviously not with the logo, but certainly with the styling and the branding. And looking around this car, that little Beetle logo is absolutely everywhere. It's in the floor mats. When you turn the car on in the first place, you get a yellow warning ignition light in the shape of the beetle. It's on the boot opening switch down here in the door. I'm sure there are other places where you will find it. I was expecting to find it on the ignition key, but it turns out that's just a generic VW key. Because a lot of the stuff in here is just generic VW parts bin componentry. The door switches, the heating and ventilation, that kind of stuff. But then you've got these very special different things like the, uh, the beetle only dashboard layout, which makes it just so much fun, so cool. Thank you for joining me in a ride out in this gloriously happy little bubble of a car. It's just lots of curves and silliness and fun. Combined, of course, with uh, sensible Volkswagenness as well. So if, if you like your fun tempered with a bit of practicality, this could well be the car for you. If you've enjoyed this, please, as always, hit like, subscribe, the bell notification to see when the next video is coming out, and join me again next time when I'll be driving something completely different.